I was at the studio, like going through Instagram and I'm like, everyone takes this stuff so serious. And I'm like, I started by looking through all the things I could be. And I was like, I could be an artist. I could be like a band. And then I was like, or I could be a grocery store. All the vibes hanging out on Zoom with Alexander Stewart. Hello. Hello, how's it going? You know what? We're doing pretty good. My name's Waters. I'm joined by my co-host, Callista, over there. What's Say hi. up? <laughs> now, we've come to talk about your new music. We've come to get to know you a little bit. But I wanted to start with a piece of trivia. You ready for this? Oh, love. Okay. Yes. Okay. Famous I'm Birthdays. Scared. Famousbirthdays.com lists you as the ninth most famous person with the last name Stewart. Okay. I'll take top 10. Yeah. Top 10. Who's to, who's a, I don't know anyone else with the name Stuart. Oh, well, this is going to make this next part a lot of fun, actually, because what we're going to do is we're going to play a game where I'm going to give you a clue about a famous Stuart, and you're going to try your best to guess which famous Stuart I'm talking about. Oh, my God. I'm going to fail miserably at every single one of these. <laughs> I bet you don't. I bet you don't. I bet you don't. These people are pretty well known. <laughs> Let's start with this one right here. DIY craft queen and Snoop Dogg's oldest friend. Which Stuart is that? Mm, just thinking about all the Stuarts in my yeah, brain yeah, right think now. About her. You've seen her on TV. She went to jail for insider trading. There's another clue. Oh, Martha Stewart. There you go. I can't believe that's the one. <laughs> yeah, yes! I'm talking about jail. <laughs> <laughs> You're one out of one. So far, so good. You right, know why? Why is Orange that? is the New Black. Have you ever watched Orange is the New Black? Oh, and they have the character on there that's like supposed to be Martha Stewart, essentially. <laughs> that one sends it over the edge for me. Well, I don't know about this next one then, because I already feel like I'm going to be in trouble for saying it. All right. To baldly go where no captain has gone before. Which famous Stewart is that? A bald captain? Mm-hmm. You may know him as Jean-Luc Picard, but that's not his real name. You're showing all your geekiness today. I what is really that? <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't even know how I got the first one. Hold on, let me think. <laughs> Stuart. Mm -hmm. You know him, you know him as a professor. A professor? Mm -hmm. In a wheelchair. I don't, I can't remember. I don't know. You guys, I don't know. <laughs> Patrick no Stewart. Way. Patrick Stewart. Ah! <laughs> you gotta guess that. <laughs> and then the last one, I, I didn't have, I didn't have a fancy clue for this one. I just Kristen. said, yes. <laughs> oh. I love it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> didn't even need the clue. <laughs> okay. Well, there's our famous Stewart's game. And you know what? Two out of three ain't bad. Thanks for playing. I love that so much. <laughs> That was the only one I had in my mind the whole time. And I was like, there's no way you can pass on Kristen. Imagine you. I imagine I pulled like Stuart Little. <laughs> oh, that would have been so good. All right. Well, Callista, hilarious. now that we've had some fun, now we've we've played a little game, why don't you get us started on the serious interview questions, the quote unquote hard-hitting journalism? This is this is a very serious question. So yeah. um of course, I was on your Instagram a little bit earlier, yeah. and um, your IG bio states that you are a seafood restaurant. <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> you know, what happened was probably a few months ago, I was, I was at the studio, like, going through Instagram, and I'm like, everyone takes this stuff so serious. And I'm like, I started by looking through all the things I could be. And I was like, I could be an artist. I could be like a band. And then I was like, or I could be a grocery store. So I switched <laughs> it to grocery store immediately. And then everyone on Twitter started catching on and being like, why the heck are you a grocery store? So now every few weeks, I just kind of change it to something funny. And for me, my new favorite for sure, see, it's my favorite so far is seafood restaurant because obviously I feel like I'm giving seafood restaurant. Like that is just what I do. Yeah, that's what I think of when I when I see your name, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if maybe it was like a reference to the new Harry Styles music for a sushi restaurant or something. Oh no, I just think it's hilarious. 
That's great. <laughs> it's not that deep. There's no vibe. I feel like it's just a reminder to be like social media is fun and it can be funny. And it's mm-hmm. like, it is part of my job, but like it doesn't have to be so serious. That's true. That's true. A, a good perspective too. Like it's just social media. It's just social media. I can be a seafood restaurant and make my heartbreaking songs. It's like, 2022. If you want to be a so, if you want to be a seafood restaurant, I am a hundred percent here for you. <laughs> thank you. Exactly. <laughs> I love that Instagram doesn't doesn't like flag that though. Like they're so strict on everything else. Everything but- I know, right? <laughs> like I know that one of my Gail. Is a, is a family divorce lawyer is what she has hers as. And I think it's so funny. That's so true though. She kind of is when you she really think about is, it. Right? <laughs> it's just, it's my favorite thing about Instagram now. I just change it every once in a while. Everyone is like, what, what, what is he now? I mean, I love it. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what you pull out next because- uh, I was just going to say, I'm going to follow you just to, just to see that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Me too. I actually enjoy going- through the list because there are some ridiculous ones on there they have just about anything you can imagine so like sometimes it's also hard keeping it like pg because sometimes it's funny there's some crazy ones you won't be choosing like stripper anytime soon (laughs) that'd be so funny (laughs) yeah probably not probably but also it would that would be incredible if you came onto my instagram one day and it just said stripper yeah. Yeah. Seriously. World first verified stripper. Right. Like, I mean, hello. That would be amazing. The issue is though, that one is like, if someone truly had no idea who I was, they could be like, Oh, okay. But like seafood restaurant is like, I'm so obviously not a seafood restaurant. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure it's slang for something, someone, somewhere. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, probably. We don't even want to know. Anybody watching this, if a seafood restaurant stands for a new position, comment it down below. No, don't tell us. I want to so badly Google. My favorite thing ever is just Googling words and then Urban Dictionary after, because there are Uh, definitions for basically anything, but you anything that seafood restaurant would be something on there. Probably, probably. I can't even begin to wrap my head around it. Let's talk about music for a second, shall we? (laughs) Yeah. Transition. Yes. Pivot transition. <laughs> Let's go talk about Alexander Stewart, the musician, not just the sushi restaurant. So your <laughs> first cover was Billy Joel's New York State of Mind. All these years later, what is your favorite song to cover? Uh, Stay by Rihanna. It would have to be. Okay. Because I, in grade nine, this is like the spiel I do on stage. I do this song every time I do, I, I sing it live. Uh, every time I play live, I sing the song. Um, and basically I, it was the first ever song, pop song I performed live in front of an audience. It was in ninth grade, uh, at my high school's talent show, Riverdale Idol. And my sister rallied, she went to school with me. She's three years older. So I was in grade nine, she was in grade 12. And she rallied every single person in that whole damn school of like 1200 people to go. And when I got on stage, you wouldn't even put like the reaction I got. And, And I was like, I was not cool in grade nine. Like I was like lame. No one knew who I was, but she got everyone to go. I felt like a superstar. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, I have to do this forever, essentially. And then I started doing covers and then covers turned into originals. And now I do my thing. (laughs) Like I went to your YouTube channel and you've got so many cover songs. So I was actually wanting to ask you, is there a cover song that you really want to do? but like you're kind of a little bit afraid to approach for now. Well, it's so funny because so many of the Lizzo songs I would have loved to do, but also I just simply couldn't pull that off in the way that would make it cool. But like, it's it's so weird to, to, because there are so many songs I would love to cover, but I've kind of stopped doing them because they were such an incredible way for me to get into like the sessions I wanted to be in and to write my own music and to meet all the people I wanted to meet my whole life and like do all the cool things that I, 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 that I love to do now. But it's like, I had to make this interesting, like conscious decision when I was like, like two years ago or a year and a half ago, where I was like, I'm basically going to sort of not stop, but like maybe do like, I was doing like one a week, just trying to get in front of people, trying to like get my music heard, trying to like get people to like follow me. And like, I realized that as incredible as it was and as, as it is and what it's done for my career, it's also like that isn't fully what I wanted to do because I wanted to like, you know, make my own music and share my own story and like 
really starting last year with a song I have called House of Cards, it was the first original that I that I put out that I got to put out that that felt really authentically me, and it just like changed it changed so much for me to be able to start putting out music that like spoke to me instead of just like making pop music that I didn't necessarily relate to and there were so many reasons that was happening and not all of them were <laughs> because of me no shame <laughs> but also it's so funny too because that song came out as a card and it did better than any of the other originals I had put out off the bat and I was like who would have thought like music that I relate to that I want to put out does better like what yeah yeah so it was like this crazy journey of like singing on that stage in grade nine to like doing all these covers just to try to get people to like believe in me then to transition to original songs and then finally original songs that I like that I can fully get behind myself that are like my actual story and it's just like quite a bizarre insane journey I was thinking about it yesterday too like laying in bed and I'm like so I'm, I'm like the king at comparing myself to other people for sure like I mm-hmm. get really down on myself yeah. but then also I was laying in bed being like I'm so grateful for just like pr- like pushing and pushing and pushing because it's like everyone has <clears throat> their own journey I love to think of it it's like you're not like ahead or behind schedule like you're always exactly where you're supposed to be in life and so I look at that whole crazy journey and I'm just like I'm just trying to look at it with like so much gratitude to be like this is this was a crazy thing I did and it like led me to where I am now and I believed in myself enough to do it. And like, yeah, it's just, it's just wild to think about it. I don't know how I got on that whole tangent from you asking about what my favorite song to cover is, but <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Now that takes us to the new song that you have out mm-hmm. when you love someone. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So when you love someone is very catchy, by the way, it's actually a really, really good song. Like, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to artists and I, I shouldn't even say this. Sometimes we'll talk to artists and they'll be like, eh, whatever, eh, there's, a, there's a reason this song needs promo. But I really like, I really <laughs> like when you love someone that it's very well done. So good job. Thank you. Sure. I appreciate that. Of course. Now, I want to ask you three questions about it. Kind of lightning round, short answer <laughs> type of thing. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, and you let us know, okay? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Is the story in When You Love Someone true? Absolutely. Okay. Does the person you wrote the song about know? Yes. Okay. And what is your relationship status now after all of that? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Basically, the song is about. Um, well, the song is pretty self-explanatory, to be honest. It's like if you've heard it, you hear the whole verse, everything about it, like kind of just goes over the story. I essentially fell in love with one of my friends back in Toronto who did not like me back. And I had put so much of my self-worth and self-love into this basket with this other person who didn't even like me. So it was just heartbreaking to try to have to like separate myself from it. And they do now for sure. And I have not talked to them in a very long time now. And I kind of had to do that for myself because I was so wrapped up in it that I was just losing parts of myself trying to just convince this human being that it was amazing and it wasn't. And I remember sitting in the studio writing the song a few months ago. Um, and this was a while too, this was a while ago that the situation happened, but like the song says like these the feelings, maybe you're not necessarily in love with someone anymore, but there's always a part of you that's gonna remember the like feeling and the mm-hmm. pain and whatever is in that situation, like those feelings are strong. When you, on, on all sides of the spectrum, when you have feelings for someone, like real feelings, everything that they do or you do related to the situation is amplified by a million. So it's like, I was sitting in the studio thinking about the whole thing and how many years I basically wasted on this, on this relationship, situationship that was never gonna work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just started like bawling because I wanted to like, move on so badly from something that happened so long ago and I just still couldn't do it fully and it was holding me back in so many other aspects of like seeing other people and like making meaningful connections and not comparing them to this other human that you know nothing was ever going to happen with so it was this weird idea and I I was talking to my co-writer Thomas O'Neill Adam you're on in the session basically explaining it just like not in a great place and 
we wrote the song came together so quickly and since i wrote the song and like saw the people reaction to it and i like, got it out there it's been such like a healing experience and i really have felt a shift since i put it out i stand by what i said the feelings never go away what i mean by that is again it's not like you know i'm as madly in love with this human as i was but it's like there's still a part of me that's like mm. but that part is getting smaller and smaller until hopefully it's so small i can hold it and be like okay like this was a thing that happened to me but i don't have to let it like control anything i could just put it in my back pocket i can leave it as a memory and it'll just be fine yeah. yeah it's like a scar that needs to heal right yeah exactly that's exactly what it is it's someone described this the other day to me in such an interesting way it's like someone like takes a stick or something or like you bump into a tree or some stuff and the stick is like in your side you got a thorn in your in your side right and it's like the more you move with it in there it's like the worse it's gonna get but as soon as you rip it out it's gonna be bad at first and it's gonna bleed and it's gonna suck and be painful but then it has the opportunity to start healing mm -hmm. Deep. right wow. that's an it was a very interesting it was i don't even know who it was it was someone in the session that i never met before they just said it. i was like huh i love that <laughs> <laughs> puts it puts it like describes it perfectly describes it perfectly puts it in perspective yeah. but that's the thing every human on this planet deals with strong emotions and it's like especially when it comes to you know being in love with someone yeah, That's, I feel like I, I feel like everybody goes through this and obviously everybody has that one heartbreak that's like the worst. Yeah. But since we don't want to dwell on the bad times, let's finish with like talking about the successes. Earlier this year, you actually met Liam Payne. Ah, yes, I did. Yeah. So now that you're starting to meet all these big celebs, who are you manifesting to meet before 2023? Uh probably. Doja Cat. Okay. <laughs> I just feel like that would be the, the absolute pinnacle of happiness for me. <laughs> and I mean, Doja Cat would be amazing, an amazing person to meet. Well, this has been a hilarious conversation. Like, I'm almost sad been. to see it end because we have, we've done both everything and nothing. Like, we covered so much ground, and yet I also feel like there's so much left to explore. So maybe we'll have to have you back sometimes. Does that sound good? Absolutely. I would love nothing more. Okay. Well, thank you for your time today, Alexander Stewart, and uh, best of luck out there, man. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the conversation. Y'all are hilarious and very fun to talk to. <laughs> we had a great time. Bye.